So we're going to jump into Angela van den Bogaert's testimony to the Post Office Horizon IT inquiry and listening to her explanation of why she ended up leaving the Post Office. And she does seem to firmly highlight that it wasn't to do with court cases and criticism by the High Court judge following the 2019 Bates and others court case that the Post Office lost and the other issues which were springing up relating to the Post Office scandal at the time, but that she was disillusioned with the way the post office were handling the horizon shortfall scheme and compensation for sub postmasters. If you do have a couple of quid to spare and you want to support our work, please feel free to check out the links to Patreon and Locals in the profile description below. Thanks again for all your support. Let's jump into the inquiry. Uh, can we look please at PVEN 50280 and uh, over the page please. This is a copy of um, text messages exchanged between you and Paula Venels in May 2020. And can you see that the one at the top is Miss Venels asking you how you are and what lockdown is like for you, yes? Yes. And then your reply is at the foot of the page, hi Paula, good to hear from you. We're all keeping well, thank you. I hope you are too. Lockdown has been 24-7 working on COVID-19 crisis management for me in recent weeks. However, I leave the post office on Monday, just finalising the details of my agreement, and it's not common knowledge in work yet, but the time is right for me to leave. The last year has reinforced that for me. Don't know what I'll do going forward, but I'm looking forward to past as new. I'm glad some things I've said have been useful. Uh, for you take care etc yes. it's interesting so although she might not have had a formal relationship with the board where she met with them lot she's clearly got a friendship here you would suggest with um paula venels and it does seem like the lack of people knowing that she's leaving despite leaving on monday that sounds like she's imminently leaving but people don't know yet i mean wonder whether it was a rapid decision and whether that's the case or she just didn't really want to publicize to the post office staff that she was leaving for some reason. You say it wasn't common knowledge in work that you were leaving, but the time is right for you to leave. The last year has reinforced that for you. It, it seems from this that it was what had happened in the previous year that was relevant to your decision to leave. Is that right? That's correct. In that time, the post office had lost the common issues trial. Mm -hmm. um, the post office had lost the horizon issues trial. The post office had failed successfully to appeal to the Court of Appeal and the post office had reached a settlement of over £50 million with uh, the group litigation claimants. Uh, you had been um, significantly and deeply criticised by a High Court judge. Yes. Were those relevant to your reasons for leaving? Um, not really. It was what came after that. And so what came after that? So I think, um, just to set the context, so the only, um, when I moved into the branch uh, improvement, sorry, business improvement role, that was the first time that I'd been exclusively working on that role. So throughout the whole of my career, um, including the investigations of second, second Sight at the start, the scheme, that was in addition to my day job. So I was, it was additional responsibility. So when I moved into the, uh, business improvement role that was full-time supporting the GLO um, so technically when that ended my role was redundant but I didn't leave straight away because that was in the December and I left in the May so after after the um, the settlement then I started to I was asked then to look at um, the horizon shortfall scheme what that would look like um, and I spent some time working with the lawyers it would have been HSF at that time and I think for me, I got a bit disillusioned in as much as we had settled and therefore my view is we should now push on and deliver what we said we would, which is the Horizon um, Shortfall Scheme, as quickly as we should. And it, it just wasn't happening. And Why I wasn't it happening? Because there was, um, there was lots of discussions around what that should look like, how long it should take. Um, and I just got very disillusioned. I mean, so my, my, my comment to the business at the time was that 
the horizon... Sorry, um, the document Sorry. can come down. And can you move forward slightly Sorry. and make sure those two microphones are angled towards your mouth? I mean, I guess it's understandable to be disillusioned. I guess the question is why it seemed to take so long for that disillusionment to settle in, maybe after those setbacks that the post office had in the final year that she was there. Maybe it's something started to dawn on her to say this isn't right. I, I don't know. I mean, unless she tells us, we don't know for sure. OK, is that, be, is that better? Uh, a bit better, if you can keep your voice okay, up. OK, I'll try. Um, sorry, I do tend to drop my voice, so if, just let me know and I'll raise it. So, um, You said that you said to, and then I missed who you said it to. So it was, it was a general conversation uh, within the business. I said, you know, the success um, would be measured by how quickly we pay out um, compensation how much compensation we pay out and how little we spend on solicitor um, costs in doing that. And I was concerned that all of that was reversed. So we were spending quite a lot of money on solicitor costs and we weren't progressing um, applications th through that scheme as quickly as we should. So by the time I left uh, in the May, um, no payments had been made and we weren't any further forward. So I just got very disillusioned with... Um, I suppose the intent of the business to to resolve what we'd agreed that we would do. And, who and I guess the question with that is who was the blocker then? Who was making the solicitor cost rise and the compensation claim stall? Who was driving the, atten the intent of the business to, to not do the thing three things that you've well, identified? I'm not, I'm not really sure um, because the, 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 the lawyers were he heavily involved um, at the time um, I just didn't seem to get the traction I thought we should have, you know. So, so my view was, you know, we'd we'd come through the you know very difficult trials, we'd 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 agreed the settlement, and therefore we accept that position, and we should move on and do what we should do as quickly as we should. So it wasn't the loss of the trials and the criticisms of the judge that prompted you to leave. It was disillusion with the post office delivering on its commitments. For me personally, yes. I mean, I had had a conversation with Paula before we went into the trials that I was thinking of leaving the business. And that was because I felt at the time I was being um, pigeonholed into the litigation and I wanted to explore other things um, from a career perspective. So it wasn't, um, it, it wasn't something I hadn't discussed previously, but at that time Paula had asked me to stay um, because of my extensive knowledge of the business and the fact that I'd you know, been close with the initial investigation with Second Sight and the scheme. Um, so I agreed to stay. But yeah, but it was just that it was a personal thing for me. As you say, we weren't delivering on what we said we would as quickly as I thought we should do. D did the revelations made by the Horizon Issues judgment not have any impact on you in terms of your career and decision to leave at all. The fact that, for the first time, a person in authority, a High Court judge, had found the existence of, say, 30 bugs, errors and defects that either had or had the potential to cause shortfalls, a fact that the post office had been denying for decades, have some impact on you? I think, well, that was the, that was obviously the, that was the final position. But I think as we went through the GLO, um, it was obvious as we were going through that things were, you know, in terms of what we, what I was seeing, there was stuff that I hadn't, I wasn't aware of before. So for me, it was kind of we were on that journey anyway. Um, the extent of the judgments, I think, was a surprise. Um, but having gone through the whole process, and I was, you know, I did, I did attend the two trials every day, but you know. Um, so I could see that coming together as they went through. So, so it wasn't a complete revelation, um, but and and that actually didn't. That wasn't the reason for me leaving the business. From my perspective, it wasn't my reason. It was the fact that you know we just weren't delivering on what we said we would deliver, and I I felt quite strongly about that. Even though you had been directly involved in the second site initial investigation and in the mediation process, neither of which had um, uncovered mm -hmm. the bugs, errors and defects yep. that the judge found to have existed, that didn't have any impact on you at all? Well, in, 
I wish, I wish we had uncovered it, um, but the evidence from our investigations, the evidence just wasn't there to support it. Um, but what, what I wasn't aware of, and my team weren't aware of at the time, was the, you know, the amount of, um, so, so the known error logs, for instance, what we weren't aware of known error at the Kells at the time. So those things came out later as we were in the GLO process. I think that's what so it would seem that she's basically trying to say her reasons for leaving the post office were personal rather than the professional experiences she'd had, particularly in the run up to her leaving or being made redundant from her post in 2020. 